doing things a little differently today. I'm not showing my face. Nothing to see from my face today. It's all about this in front of me. This is going to be my Yule Log this year. Um, a Yule Log is part of a tradition. If you have been a regular viewer of my channel, you know that we have done quite a few videos in the past on the Yule Log. I will um, try, I'll put some links below in the description box in case you're new and you have not seen these. Um, I believe there's one video, I'll check, but I think there's one video called, I believe it's called Yule Traditions Yule Log, which has actually a, a little, a tiny little bit of a, a ritual that Joe and I did um, at Yule one year, I don't know, several years ago. Um, it was just he and I alone, it was him and I alone, um, in, in this room, actually, in the living room here, we made a Yule Log. Um, but we, we have a little different, we do it a little differently every year. We always have a Yule Log. Certain things are the same, but depending on if we are alone or we're with others, um, it changes. This year, we're going to probably be doing it with others. So we're going to change it up a little bit, but basically, it's the same thing. Okay. Why bother with the Yule Log? <laughs> um, and you will notice this is an actual log. It is not a cake. Which, yes, I know there is a Yule Log. It is a beautiful, delicious chocolate cake. I've never made one, but they're very delicious. A lot of people use those as a sort of a centerpiece to represent the Yule Log. The Yule Log um, is, and as a matter of fact, on some of my, I think some of my previous videos, I did talk about the history of the Yule Log a little bit. But basically, you know, remembering that um, how dependent the ancient peoples were on the sun and light and you know, the sun for light, the sun for warmth, um, you know, the darkness of the winter, the dark cold months were very frightening. I think they must have been very frightening to the ancients as the days grew shorter, 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 and the night grew longer, 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 um, and colder, hence colder, and it was hard, you know, they didn't have any light. That was the only light they had was from their candles or from their fire um, or from the sun. They didn't have anything else. I know a little bit about what that's like to live um, for very brief periods um, without any kind of other fuel source for, for light or warmth. Um, so it was very important to them. So to celebrate the Yule, uh, the solstice time was a very, very important time to the people. And the Yule log traditionally, it is my understanding that it is of Germanic origin, I believe, but it was used by many people. I've talked about that in the past. Um, but basically, um, the log was a huge thing. <laughs> and it, it was very large uh, log that they would come in and they would light their um, hearth fire from this. And it would burn for days. It would burn for several days, um, day and night. And they would just keep pushing the log further, further into the fire to keep the fire going. We, of course, don't do that. But we, do, when we have it ceremoniously, we will, um, normally it is our practice to extinguish the lights. At least if it's just my husband and I alone, we extinguish all the lights. When we're with a group of people, we will be in a room with the lights out, the house rather dark, with, but we keep the light like from our tree lit. So there's some kind of, for safety, we have a little bit of, <laughs> that gives a little bit of light. But um, basically, it is darkness, and then we um, light the candles on the Yule Log, and then um, we bring in the light. And then, of course, then that Yule Log will be burned to start a new fire, and we usually save a piece from that Yule Log. We always save a piece from the Yule Log a little bit to start the new fire the next year. And I, I have shown that in the past. I know in a video, we keep it in a little paper bag. Mark Yule Log, and my husband brings that out every year, and he will start the fire this year from that piece of last year's Yule Log. Okay, but basically the Yule Log is just, I have the camera here to show you. I'm going to try to make fashion something. It could be anything you want. Of course, you need a log, a piece of wood, and if you don't have one, you can get something from the store. You know, even if it's a split log, it's not a whole log like this round, because you want it to be able to sit flat. And I have this facing me because I have this, I'll turn it this way so you can see. 
it had this bees on it, which I thought was really kind of charming. And these little bits sticking up, which I, <laughs> that's what I like. It drives my husband crazy when I do that, but I love it. So, but I'm going to turn around so I can see it, my vantage to see my viewpoint. So I can decorate. And then I will show you what it looks like at the end. But basically, we're going, we have holes. My husband has drawn holes, drilled holes, which I think you said are an inch deep. And we're using three different candles. We always use three. And we usually use one in the center, which is white. And I'm going to even trim the wick right now while I'm thinking about it. Because the last time I did not trim the wick and I was sorely disappointed when it goes to burn. If you don't have like a trimmed wick, you don't get a good, good, nice, good burn on the candle. That's true of any candles. Not just on your Yule log. That's pretty good. But you don't need a big, long, floppy uh, wick. Anyway, the center light, the center candle we usually use, this is just our tradition. You can use any kind you want. But the center candle we use is white, usually white, which represents the spirit. spirit. And then we usually use red and green, which, yes, I know are traditional Christmas co colors. But to us, we use the um, green to represent the Earth Mother. And we use the red to represent um, the solar god, the solar god born anew. So we have green and white and red. You can put those on the other side. It doesn't really matter because this is not, this is just for fun. <laughs> it's just for fun. But anyway, what I usually do, then what do I put on it? Well, it's very important because we're realizing from the beginning that this whole log, candles and all, is going to go into the fire. Whether it's in a fireplace or in a fire pit, however you do, um, you're going to burn it. So we want to make sure that everything you put on here is natural material and it is something that can be burned. We don't want anything toxic. And so when I say you can put anything on there, I want to say with exception and one very, very large exception, do not put, do not include is mistletoe where we're really, I know we're really um, tempted to use mistletoe because mistletoe is very much associated with the season and it is even associated with a lot of our pagan practice. We do not burn it indoors ever because it, the, the fumes coming, the smoke coming, breathing that from that mistletoe is toxic. We do not want to breathe that at all. So this is going to be in my fireplace in my living room. No, uh, there will be no mistletoe on here. But one thing I get every year, regardless of what I put on here, is I get, well, my husband actually gets it. He gets this. I can put it down so you can see. It's pretty large. This year I got large. Sometimes it's just little pieces. But he gets them from the Christmas tree lot. Um, when they cut off, you know, when people buy a tree, they often will trim the bottom and put it in a, a like a little cheese tree stand for some people. They like to buy it stand and all. And they cut the bottom and they um, trim off some of these branches to put it in the stand for them and then whatever they do to transport it. But they're always sweeping up these things and they will give them to you if you ask. So I like to get them because I find they're lovely to go on my um, Yule log and they're for free. Because I do not grow these kind of things in where I live. You might, depending on you where you live, have a lot of access to these kind of things, but I do not. So I'm going to just cut like lengths. I don't know how many I need. So I'm just going to find some, you know, that I manageable sizes that I can add to my log. And oh my goodness, it smells so good. It smells so lovely. I might cut that down a little further. I think I'll cut one more just because, um, the other thing you could do with these, these sales smell so nice. I do keep a um, a natural wreath on our front door. We have that every year. We pick one of those up. Actually, we always get ours from Trader Joe's. It's like a, a tradition. But, um, because they have lovely fresh wreaths every year. But, and we keep that up and it stays on our front door to Imolk. And we'll talk about that another time. But at any rate, um, I also have a but indoors, I usually use artificial greenery because our climate is dry. We don't have a lot, an access to a lot of um, live greenery. Our tree is live. 
not live, but fresh, freshly cut. And our, um, not an artificial tree, I mean. <laughs> I realize it's not freshly cut. But it is, an art, it is not an artificial, we use a natural tree. But I do have some other greenery, like um, a mantle, a garland that I put on the mantle that I, that it's pretty nice, but you know, there's still artificials, artificial. So I like to take some of these fresh, these cuttings from the, that I get from the trees, which smell so lovely, and add those, tuck those in in different places in that garland to just, you know, freshen it up a little bit, make it a little more alive. <laughs> so I always use some cuttings. Um, he also brought me in some ivy. We had some ivy and they were always fighting with that grows on the wall. He brought me some of that. He brought me some more of my beautiful rosemary that is just lovely and it's flowering. Oh my goodness. I just love it when it flowers. The most delicate little purple flowers um, on it, which will be nice. And then he brought in again, since we have them everywhere, marigolds, because we love the marigolds. He brought some of those to add a little more color if we wanted. And I thought it would be nice to add, I thought about this the other day, I have these beautiful little dried roses, little rosebuds that I, I could burn them and put them in blends. But I thought, oh, would they, some of those might be cute on there. I might tuck them in because I burn those all the time. And the only other thing that I use on here always is little pine cones. And I just happen to find these three. This is kind of large. I have two about this size and then I have a little smaller one. Um, they were handy, so I grabbed them, and I thought I could put those on there as well. So we're just going to, I'm just going to stick things in there. There's no, it's just pure choice where you put them on. And then to stick them, you can do different things. You can tie, you could use twine to tie it on. And sometimes I use twine if I want to put things that need to lay flat or whatever. I might wrap twine around it. But most of the time, I just use a hot glue gun because it's not going to hurt it at all and that's going to go it's going to be perfectly fine in the to burn the candles are going to burn everything's going to burn okay so i'm going to start with the basis i'm going to start with some basis of some greenery and what i want to do and i have my candles in place because i just want to sometimes i like to lay um maybe i get a bigger one um so that I have greenery on both sides of the candles so that it lays. And I have that little stick up thing right there. So I could probably do something like that. Lay that on. So I'm gonna take my glue gun. It's gonna be a little bit tricky to try to show you how to film it. And where am I gonna tuck that? I'm just gonna put some down here in the middle. See how that's bouncing up and down? Can you see that? In between, I'm just going to put a blob of glue in there. Good bit. And I'm just going to stick. Um, hold that down. Put that down. In there. So I like some of it to lay down flat, which gives me a bed to put other things on it. But other ends, I like to stand, let, them, let them stand up. Like here, I like to let that come up, that's pretty. So I have one coming this way and I might wanna take, let's see here, another one and take it the other way. Let's see. Um, So I see, sort of see some green. Um, and here, I'm trying to bend it. I'm trying to bend the shape around this candle a little bit. So um, I can maybe let the candles hold it that way. But I think what I'm gonna do right here, rather than glue that, I think I'm gonna take some twine lay the twine and uh, wrap that around there. Tie that around, tie it down. So, just gonna hold that and wrap it a couple times. 
because the twine it doesn't look so pretty but I can hide it with things I'm gonna go three times because that's how long my that's how long my uh, twine is and I'm just gonna tie a knot now I'm leaving it's cumbersome with the candles in but you have to leave the candles in because um, it's hard to get them in afterwards okay so I just tied that, so that's nice and secure. You want everything to be secure. You want to leave it, um, you want it to stay, last as long as you can. Let me see, get my trash over here. Okay, so I have more of this, but I think, um, want any more of that green I might maybe if that's gonna curve down So I'm just going to tuck that underneath it. Then I think that'll stay. That'll stay. So I have pretty much a nice basis there. This side is a little sparse. So I'm going to start from this side when I do the next thing, which is some of this ivy. And let's see what I have. Um, oh, and look at the, the state of the leaves is what I'm looking at. Which do I like the nicest leaves? This is more long. Some is more clumpy than others. Some is more long. So I'm going to just have maybe one of these. Let's see here. Um. I want it to go sort of inside this, uh, inside the, um, the, uh, I don't know if this, what is kind of a pine this is, but I want it to kind of go inside. So... I think if I put some hot glue here and hold that down, I've got this really lovely little stumpy thing that I don't want to cover up. So. Holding the um Holding the green in place so the the, the um, glue dries is kind of the challenge. So by putting this there, I might put it, put put some twine around that and too, just to hold it because these are the foundation pieces. Um, on my log, and then the other ones I can just move the glue down. I want these to stay real well. So I'm going to take this. Um, this is the back okay well you I see yes you can see that but you can see the string that's okay and then this is the front okay so again I'm going to turn it to the front my front because then I have other things that I want to put on here I have big pine cones the pine cones if I want to use three of them they're kind of big, so I might want to put one. And the, the trick about pine cones is, often they have a bad side and a good side. I, you can't always see it, but here you can see it on this little one. There's a big hole out of here. 
So if I was going, this is a perfect place to put a lot of glue and let it sit this way. So this would be up. Um, also, you could, you could have, if it's a lovely shape, you can have it stand up so it's like a little tree. That's a nice shape. And put other things at the base. Um, I'm pretty full here in the center for a pine cone to go in the center. That kind of would maybe look a little, a little too much. But I do have these nice ends. I have my little stump here that I could put something on that stump if I chose. But that's just a little bit too uh, planned for me. So I think what I'm going to do is I have a little space in here where I'm going to put... Am I going to put a pine cone there? I don't think so. I like, I don't know if you can see, but this little place here, I really love. This little stumpy place. Can you see that? It's like a little raised, it's, it, it was, it was sawed there long ago, so it's, it's aged. It's not a fresh cut. And it just has a lot of character to it. So I might, um, use that for flower or have something just lay on it. Beside here, I could use a pine cone this way, beside it. Um, you just play with it and you see how does it fit? How does it fit? That seems to want to lay right like that. I don't think it wants to lay upside down. Yes, it kind of does. So right beside that candle. So I'm gonna put that pine cone right there. So you just, I think I'll be happier if I take this glue gun. I have a paper towel here so it doesn't go all over my towel as it drips. I will bring this around like that. Then I can get to it better. I realize you can hardly see that over there. Um, but, I'm going to try to put some glue in here. A lot of glue. And then I take my pine cone and I'm just going to lay it right there. There we go. Right there. I'll hold that for a second. So it dries. <laughs> Is this making you crazy? I think you're going to hate this video. But you're going to love it when it's done. I'm, I'm going to be done soon. I'm going to just show you how simple it is. You see, I'm not, I'm really not that artistic with this kind of thing. I have some challenge, but this doesn't seem to be one. And now I see right away when I'm looking at it. Maybe you can see this. Here's my pine cone. I have a little place right in here that's just begging for something. So I'm going to put one of these little rose buds in there. I think that's perfect. Maybe I will put a little marigold in there too. I maybe will, I maybe will. Let's see. I put marigold. Oh, this smells so good. Marigolds have just been our flower this year. I've never seen anything like it in the past. And as I push it through, I want to kind of secure it. You wind it in there. And I can trim that back if I want to. That looks kind of pretty. And then I put a little rosebud Oh, a little rose with it. Oh, that's going to be cute. So in this case, I'm going to put some on the stem of the rose. Some glue. And it's tricky because my... There we go. Um, yeah, the glue strings. Glue strings are just all over me. Okay, so now I can show you what I did there. You see how pretty that looks? The little rosebud. 
and a little color marigold. It just, it pops. It makes a little bit of light. Because I realize, here I am in the dark with the green, this is my green candle. Probably can't even see it next to my green shirt. There. <laughs> okay. But then I have the pine cone. My little stubby thing is still there. And I have these, um, this little bit of color. I'm going to attend a little bit to the back before I go on to the front. Because I want, you know, even though it's going to be seen from the front, we want the back to look pretty too. So I do have um, some of this rosemary. I have three big, my husband brought me in three nice long cuttings of it. So um, let me take one and it just smells so nice. And I'm going to just tuck it along here in the back. Um, and kind of let it lie in there. Um, over top. And maybe I will put um, the mirror gold in the back. I'm going to go crazy with miracles. I realize that, but <coughs> this is just the first year I've had such a success with them. I don't even want to tie. Let's see. I kind of, as you can see, I kind of stick things in. I, you know, just give it a, just try it and see what happens. Oh, I like that. I like it underneath. So I'm going to, and I'll show you when you, when I turn it around. Let's see. So I put it in first where I want it. And then I go ahead and put glue on it. Trying to remember where I had it. And then I um, stick it in. Stick it in. Because it's just a little bit of color that I'm trying to. Um, you know, I'm going to be caught in this web of, <laughs> of um, glue. All right, you can see that. You see, I just stuck it in there. And here's my rosemary on the top. I realize my light just is terrible when you probably cannot see anything. Remember, this is the back, but I want the back to be just as joyous as the front. Okay, so I will probably put, um, I think I'll put a, rose, a rosebud down here. And now I'm turning it around back to me. You can see I'm going to be pulling glue off strings off of here forever. Making sure it's sitting flat all the time. Making sure I can sit flat. Now I'm just attending to the final things in the front. I could put another pine cone. I think I will put one pine cone over here on the end. Which one? Um... Where do I want it up here? I cannot decide. I think this side is just pretty with the little um, thing, so I'm going to put it over here. And I'm just going to put a big glob on the bottom and just stick it. Stick it there. <laughs> this is what I'm going to do. Just stick it on the end. So. Here we go. And I think I'm going to need another glue stick. See, I go really fast through the glue sticks. Okay, I'm almost done. I only have a few more things I want to stick on. Then I'll give you a good shot of what I look like. Be sure I want to use all of this rosemary. Because 
So rosemary is lovely. So. And I am sort of, um, I am uh, alternating which side I'm doing this on so that I'm letting glue dry a little bit. I have this, a um, couple more of these uh, marigolds I could put in here. Here's one of them. I need something right here. You know, this is honestly, I want to tell you the first time I've ever put marigolds on a yule log. Because I've never had, I've never grown them. But why not? We use marigolds all the time this time of the year. We want to, they're very much a part of our ancestors. Um, why not? We're talking about traditions. We're talking about years past sent with our loved ones, with those that we love. No reason in the world that we cannot um, incorporate marigolds into Yule. You know, everybody thinks in terms of poinsettias and holly and well, you know, depending on where you live, you use you do you wherever you are, wherever you are. Okay. I think I, had, I have another little rosebud I really want to use. But I think I'll use here in the front. Um, right here. I apologize for not showing you until I turn it. I'm just putting it in different places to see. should go. And I think it should go right in the middle. That's where it's going to go. Stick right there. piece of rosemary I really want to use. So I'm just going to go um, again tuck it let me turn this around so I can get a better angle on my tucking okay so I think this is pretty well. Here's the back. There's the back. The back side is nice and full. Oh, it smells lovely. It really does. And here's the front. And there's the front. And that's the way it's going to sit. Okay? And it's going to sit unlit. I'm so sorry that I wore this shirt because I think I'm hiding. <laughs> Just a minute, I think I'm hiding it against my shirt. I can't tell, but I'm going to hold a towel up in front of me. <laughs> oh, is that better? Maybe now you can see it. My lighting is so poor in here. I just couldn't have to. That's my New Year's, my New Year's promise to you. I'm going to try to improve my lighting. But anyway, it's lovely. I wish you could see from here how pretty it is. But it's lovely on both sides. So it really doesn't matter if I have it that way or if I turn it around and have it this way. It's still lovely. And it's beautiful fragrance. And it's combined, made a combination of, you know, um, fresh greens and ivy from my garden and marigolds from the garden flowering rosemary from the garden, some pine cones, um, and a few dried little rosebuds. And that's it. And it's going to stay until we do the lighting on it for Yule. 
and um, we will darken and then we will start with the light. And when the candles burn a little ways, when they get a little down close to where they're going to be, I don't want to catch these things on fire, it's going to go in the fireplace. And then it's going to, um, and then we're going to start our fire, our yule fire with that. So anyway, thank you for watching. I, I'm going to try to edit this so that it's not the most boring things you've ever seen. But I did want to share my yule log with everybody. I'll turn it around one more time so you can see the front. If that's the front, I might change my mind. It might be the back. <laughs> but there again, there it is with my towel. <gasps> what this is bad TV. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Um, blessed Yule, everyone.